welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. After spending close to two decades with the German sportswear major Puma and taking them taking them to the pole position in the Indian market, my guest today then decided to t- to travel the road less traveled. He then put on his entrepreneurial hat and launched Agilata Sports, and his first move was the acquisition of B2B sportwear manufacturing firm Mokicho Shoes. They even managed to raise over 400 crores. Now you can say has, he has literally hiked over the Alps and forged a partnership with an Italian major. Well, he does seem to have his running shoes on, and to tell us more, please welcome Abhishek Ganguly. Abhishek, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Abhishek, first, can you just tell us, uh, tell us more now that you plan to bring in the uh, Loto into the Indian market? So what was it that prompted you to make this move? And what are you seeing the synergies with the parent company? Well, well before I get to, uh, you know, Loto and our, our, our license our, uh, partnership with, with Loto as a brand, I would say that um, the thesis of setting up Agilitas was primarily to see that sportswear is growing phenomenally in India. And by all terms, this is going to become like 4x of today's size in the next eight years, driven by a lot of uh, macro factors. Uh, Most importantly, with the uh, widening of the uh, Indian middle class and more disposable income and, and India having a very young demographic. So my thesis to set up Agilitas was primarily stemming from that. And um, while we were doing that, um, it I, I didn't want to just play into one part of the value chain. So we decided between uh, Amit Atul and myself, the, the co-founders of, of Agilitas, that we should play end-to-end from manufacturing to retail. Um, our first acquisition was a manufacturing company, uh, and now we are getting into the consumer business. Um, our, our investment in the consumer business, our first announcement on the consumer business is acquisition of a 40-year license with um, the Italian sports brand Lotto, which has a lot of uh, uh, history, a lot of heritage and authenticity around sport, and has also a very um, quite a s- substantial brand recall in in India, and uh, now with with this license, which is around manufacturing, so we have the license for manufacturing, design, product creation, distribution, and retail on an exclusive basis for certain markets led by India. We are going to really get into the entire white spaces that we believe today exist. Um, which would be to deliver high quality sportswear, uh, both on the performance and athleisure side, uh, to the Indian consumer, um, at a price which is, uh, which is in favor of the consumer. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, the forex growth. So, can you give me an idea about the market size currently and what, uh, where do you see it down the road? Yeah, so the market today by various estimates as well as reports suggest that the premium and the mid, uh, mid-price uh, sportswear market performance and athleisure put together is about a couple of billion dollars. Um, I'm ignoring the uh, extremely entry price point uh, product categories and the price points. Um, but I'm talking more of the mid to premium Um that is a couple of billion. What is very interesting is what I previously said that this is going to become eight billion by uh, 2032. Uh, so it's a the sh- the size of the prize is really growing um, at the at the behest of a lot of other things that is happening around the category and even beyond that. Uh, you mentioned about your acquisition, uh, the manufacturing acquisition. Can you elaborate a bit more on your business model? Well, yes. So Agilitas is a, a full-scale, comprehensive sports company, uh, sportswear company. We aspire to be India's largest sports company. We also aspire to be 
um, you know, originated from India, but for the world, we do have aspirations to take an Indian sports company global. Uh, in in the quest for this, we want to play on manufacturing, brand management, as well as retail. Um, and that is why our first investment was on a pure play uh, manufacturing company, Mochiko Shoes, which was set up 16 years back by Virender Awal and uh, six uh, and five other promoters of that company. Um, and they went on to build India's largest sports footwear manufacturing company, uh, which is still in its very nascent stage. Uh, because on the apparel side, manufacturing in India, India has been around for decades onto this, but sports footwear is very, very early days and hence has a huge headroom for growth. Most of the global brands today that is a customer of Mochiko shoes, whether it is Adidas, Puma, uh, Skechers, New Balance, uh, you know, uh, uh, Asics, um, and all these brands want to actually move their supply chain closer home to India due to various reasons uh, of speed and agility, uh, and also being an end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, um, play from India. And because of this, there is a lot of growth on that front. So that is one business which Mochiko is already the largest um, in the space of sports footwear manufacturing, um, you know, delivering to India. And that has a has a potential to become 3x this year. Mochiko's revenues uh, in this financial year will be to the tune of 1000 crores, which is which is quite substantial. And we see this to go to two, two, two and a half thousand crores in the next uh, four to five years. On the other side, we, we would be investing into, uh, into consumer business um, and with different brands, with different positioning and offering for the consumers. So we will be investing into three to four brands, not 10, but also not one, because we want to be, be relevant to a large base of target consumers in, 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 in India. And uh, the starting, uh, the first brand that, that we are announcing is Lotto, but there is more in the offing. Um, and all of these brands will be complementing each other. Uh, it will not be like an overlap competition to each other because uh, we want to increase our addressable market by having all these multiple brands. All these brands will have separate management team uh, and resource capital allocated to these brands for growth uh, so that you know we don't want to spread ourselves thin, but we build these brands very, very deeply in the in into you know from a brand perspective and into distribution perspective and product perspective. So all of these brands will be built very deep with separate management teams. Um, so yeah, we are we as a business, we are into business to business, contract manufacturing. We will be into consumer businesses with multiple brands. Uh, by when do you foresee that uh, Loto will be out in the market? When are you looking to launch it? Yeah, we will be launching it uh, early next year. Um, okay. We plan to launch Loto with, uh, you know, a wide set of product offering, different multiple categories, multiple distribution channels, and with a very strong uh, marketing, uh, you know, ethos building. Uh, you know, you mentioned leaving aside the lower end of the market. So the, Loto has been positioned to the mid to premium uh, uh, segment. And this is a very cluttered segment. So how are you planning to build the brand salience and also position the brand? Well, honestly, I don't think that it is a very cluttered segment. There are a few brands serious into India and there is a huge headroom for them. The market itself, as I said, is growing at 4x. There is a lot for a lot of brands. Um, the way we want to position Lotto is that we want to over-index ourselves into consumer value for the cost to the consumer or to the or the price to the consumer. Uh, we will put disproportionate efforts to ensure that the consumer gets maximum value for the price, and 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 that is from from a standpoint coming from a very strong 
you know lineage of sport and also then in then then taking that to uh, the street you know today a sports sports is actually um, uh, transcending the boundaries of the pitch and the court and going to the street and the and and that's a space of athleisure that we will really bring about um and and uh, we really want to stand for a great brand focused into india a brand with a lot of heritage focused in india with a very strong sports uh, you know investment thesis but on the other hand bringing about products that um, the people on the street and on on outside the pitch can wear with um, you know um, uh, and and that adds to their fashion quotient uh coming to marketing what are the key marketing pillars that you will be looking is there any platform that you will be aggressively targeting or is it a 360 degree marketing plan that you plan to roll out well by the time we come to the early uh, next year we will have a very clear marketing uh, plan uh, but if i have to come on to what i broadly believe um as as marketing channels we'll be extremely digital in our approach um and that's where the young consumers are uh, it's a mobile first world uh, i have i'm i'm strongly believe that you know building the right uh, right connect with the consumer's mind because products are made in the factory and the brands are made in the heart in the head of the consumer if you have to get into head of the consumer and the consumer starts engaging with the brand that can only happen if you uh, if you stay relevant and if you then stay, for staying relevant you need to give the consumers the, uh, the the opportunity to engage with you and and resonate with communities not just you know with uh, not just just with you know certain products but what is relevant to the community that they resonate with so uh i'm i'm a firm believer that the creator economy will grow um young creators will come about uh, and an authenticity of that brand resonating with these creators who today um who today uh, build out content which the consumers uh, you know um, especially the young consumers relate to uh, a, a a strong a strong thesis of that is how authentic are you how credible are you so we will don the very authentic credible lens on one side that on the other side we will invest heavily into grassroots sports into india into athletes clubs not just at the top end of of the curve but also uh, deeper down because what is going to happen to indian sport in the next 10 years it will be unprecedented and we not just with the lotto brand but with the rest of the brands here a group company agilita strongly believes that the there would be a, a a great mindset change and also growth in sports culture in india and we want to just be uh, you know we call it call it catalysts or or in some ways we would enablers in some ways investors into this uh, in this change that is dawning us from today to the next 10 15 years okay now uh, you know i know it's too early but i'm just going to push my luck any uh, how much would you al- plan to allocate for marketing in terms of your budget it's too well, early well you know, uh, you know i'm uh, sorry uh, sorry finish your question please no it's just uh, how much do you plan to allocate for marketing to make a buzz in the market well uh, personally i am not new to the consumer business and into the world of consumer marketing and i have never absolutely believed that it is the marketing investment per uh, percentages that make or break a brand okay. uh, and i also believe that it's not just what comes into the budgeting and the profit and loss account or what is the line item under marketing that is really a marketing as a consumer company the various elements of your business is marketing when you create products product is a very very important part of the marketing mix pricing is an important part of the marketing mix true you are doing retail then absolutely 
or you know focusing on consumer experience and convenience is marketing uh and so a brand never gets built because they signed one ambassador or they did a one large scale media campaign right you are in the business of marketing on a daily basis right every time you open a store every time the 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 store team interacts with the uh, with the with with people who walk in is is as much a part of of marketing than before i am i'm not intending to say this to uh, to dilute and get away from the question and digress from the question because i firmly believe that we will be a marketing company uh, in our consumer business i mean that's the business if you are in consumer business you are in the business of marketing you are in the business of 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 connecting your uh, brand with your consumer right so every element of our business will be oriented that's the way we will win and that's the way agilitas will win is to the entire approach on our consumer business will be marketing as far as specifically talking about how much we will spend yes you're right we have not earmarked anything specific for this but in the first 2 3 years we will allocate a lot of our capital towards ensuring that the brand the the ethos of the brand the positioning of the brand as well as the key products of the brand are uh, visible to the to the consumer and hence we will put um, you know uh, a lot of uh, capital into doing that uh, in a in an efficient way uh, it we will not spray and paint but we will stand for a few things we will dig uh, that very very deeply rightly said so you mentioned retail and consumer experience and even i'm a big believer that i go to a brand where my consumer ex- where the consumer experience is an event which provide an elevated consumer experience so just taking off from that can you talk about your distribution plans offline online and how do you ensure a seamless how do you plan to ensure a seamless elevated consumer experience Well uh let me talk specifically about Lotto as a brand next year we will have a full fledged launch now what i mean by full fledged launch is that we won't be testing waters in one channel and hoping for that to grow and then invest into other channels i am a firm believer that when you are a sports brand you need to be available in multiple channels and 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 that's what we are getting ready this year with right we are getting ready this year with um uh, you know how do we launch our stores right i mean next year we will come up with at least 15 stores in just our first year with a great experience for our consumer so we will have 15 ebos at least we okay. will come up with our own shopping app as well as our web store uh and and then go deep into building this direct to consumer online challenge we will also uh you know and, and that comes a st- stems from a bit of the background of of all of us is that we would like to leverage the mark the marketplaces the the e-commerce marketplaces and partner up with up with them to deliver the consumer promise that we are creating around the lotto brand also we will be available in departmental stores and regional retail players with shop in shops so you will see lotto next year spreading its wings through various channels with um you know deep engagement with the consumer and putting the consumer at the first uh, first place in our focus area uh you also mentioned you know that you're not just looking at the top end but you're also looking at the grassroots level when it comes to sport so you know taking off from there are you looking i know it's early days but any collaborations or even collaborations with celebrities you know say in the range of an exclusive line or just having them on board anything any plans absolutely. on that front absolutely uh, absolutely both on the athlete as well as the club side uh, on on the sports side and also on the on the on the you know sports uh, you know transcending the boundaries to be on the street on the lifestyle side on on sports influence on culture on art music entertainment also on that side we will do different different collaborations around music art culture entertainment and um, th- I I would definitely collaborate with 
uh, with the right kind of authentic brand partners uh, and not I'm definitely not of the believer of, you know, having a brand ambassador who just holds your product and does it like for a commercial, you know, uh, I don't I'm not a believer of that kind of partnerships with ambassadors, but those ambassadors for whom the brand and its objectives for the next five, 10 years mean a lot, right? We will get them on board, build, um, you know, great partnerships with these collaborations. Uh, whether we will have product collaborations, of course, we will have product collaborations as well. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. And are you planning to raise additional investments to scale up? Well, if if you see in our first six months of setting up the company, we raised quite a bit of capital. We did two rounds of fundraise. We raised, raised about 530 crores of capital. We acquired, uh, you know, an existing manufacturing company, which which is doing quite well. Um, and, and hence, uh, you know, I, I see that we are in a position today to have the right kind of capital required but we are also not build, building a, a cash dilutive business we're not building a business which guzzles cash every every year uh, because you know we have to spend so much money on customer acquisition or spending a lot of money by hitting the right price to in in our effort to hit right price points diluting our gross margins <clears throat> Sorry, so we will not build a unprofitable business. Yes, the businesses will require capital initially in the first three four years of its. Uh, all the brands will require capital investment for which we we have enough capital for the next two years. And whenever we feel that there is a need to raise more capital, we will raise. You know, look, capital is not going to be in my mind. It is a very important part of the play, but. I think what we are stitching forward, if we build a very sustainable, great business model, great uh, company, I don't think capital uh, will will be a constraint for us. So we're focused, extremely focused on building a great organization, building a great business model around the uh, company, uh, having great brands, which mean um, uh, mean a lot for for its own consumers. And hence, if, if we are very focused in building the this and also stay focused to sportswear um, and, and lifestyle, then funding is not something that we are always... We are not a company which needs capital every six months or one year. And finally, any projections that about the revenues that you're looking for at the end of year one, the growth rate you're looking and which segment are you betting on or which vertical? Well, as I said, in the business model, manufacturing is a separate vertical with a separate focus and that in itself we are enabling with, you know, right investments on technology and on capacity building. On the consumer brand side, I think the opportunity with the growth um, growth rate is just phenomenal. And both the sides of the business have huge uh, potential. Um, I... I don't want to, you know, uh, say that we uh, we have a specific one year or or year two. We are looking at it for the long haul, but I can definitely tell you that building a company which is which has a net revenue of of a billion dollars in the next few years uh, is a definite possibility um, from what we are uh, attempting to do. I, I don't say that it will happen in five years or will it happen in seven years or eight years, but we are focused to building a billion dollar company from India in sports um, and with a very long term, sustainable, profitable approach. Thank you so much, Abhishek. And here's wishing you all the luck in building the billion dollar business. Thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you.